Hi, this is part two of the video series on the HTTP request node and in this video we're going to cover query strings using mustache templates and you can see an example there. We're also going to cover getting JSON data from a website and extracting values. This is typical uh, API use and we're also going to look at uh, uh, request headers. Now this is the flow we'll be using. It's a continuation of the flow you saw in the previous video and we finished here and we're going to continue with this example here and we're using the inject node and the change node the HTTP request node and the debug node now the HTTP request node is going to query the JSON placeholder uh, website and you can see here here's the mustache query here I'll show you that again in a second so if we look at uh, the inject node we're going to inject this into the thing which is the query post with the user ID of one and the change node sets the query object from the payload so that sets the query object to what you just saw in the inject node and that query object is then going to be picked up uh, in a mustache template in the request node and you can see it here there it is there Okay, now you might ask why we've done this. We didn't need to do it. We could have just put this straight into the inject node. Uh, we didn't need the mustache templates. Well, this is just an example of using them because if you were actually generating the request programmatically in a function node, then you could use these uh, mustache style templates. You could set the objects and use them in the, in the URL. Uh, in the example we're doing it's a bit contrived we don't actually need them we could have just put them straight into the inject node okay so that's it there so let's run it and see see what happens just deploy it before we look at the debug node and examine the response let's uh, look at it in the browser so if I go over to the JSON placeholder uh, page and I just click on this link here it will issue that get requests looking for all the posts and you can see here um, over on this side it's saying it's JSON data and you can see the user ID one and the ID of the post and you can see each user has 10 um, posts so we've got ID one ID two ID three all with user ID of one if we go down we can find 10 and then we start with user ID two and starting ID 11 for the, for the post number okay so what we're going to do is we're going to extract all of the user ID posts so we should see 10 posts there and each one will have a, an ID a title and a body so here's the response in node red let's just drag this across to make it a bit bigger so we can see it a bit clearer and we can see that we got a status code of 200 coming back which is a successful uh, request and there's our payload you can see the user ID one if we expand this you can see here there's a square bracket that here indicating an array so the the posts are stored in an array so we have remember what I said we have 10 posts so the first post will be array element 0 the second post array element 1 etc and then we have the user ID which is the key so we have array element and key which is the user ID and we'll see that when we look at the extracting the data and if we go further down here and look at the headers coming back you can see here you can see here that we're getting JSON data coming back okay let's move on and let's extract the data from this payload and to do that I'm going to use this second demo flow and it's the same as the first one except this time the request json get node here um, see we same query this time we're going to get back past a uh, past json object as opposed to a, a web page which, which was the utf8 string there we're going to use this one here otherwise this is identical to that now we pass the response into the change node and we're going to extract with this change node we're going to we're going to set the payload to the original message payload zero this is the first element in the array and we're going to extract the user ID so the user ID 
we're going to extract out of that first element in the array it should be user ID number one. So let's deploy it and then make the request. And you can see over here we've got the, the payload, which is one, which is the user ID number. Now, if we wanted to extract the complete post, then we just ch change the um, message payload here. So we just remove this here. Uh, before I do that, I just want to point out the key elements, uh, the names of the key elements are case sensitive. So this is a capital I. If you use a small I, it won't work. So let's just remove that now. And we'll just take the first element, the first array element, and done. Deploy it and run it. And you can see here we, we are looking at the first el element of the array, user ID 1, ID of the post, the title, and the body. So that's how to extract JSON data from a JSON payload. Now let's move on now and look at uh, setting message, message headers. And to do that, we're going to use the authorization. We're going to use the username password. Now the easiest way to do this is actually in the HTTP GET node itself. And you can set it here use basic authentication and we're going to this time we're going to query the postman site and uh, we can go for a page called basic authentication and, and when we request that page it's going to require require that we authenticate using a username and password now the easiest way to do it is do it here and that is normally the way you do it but i want to demonstrate to you setting message headers and the the authentication is a, a message header, so we're going to do it the hard way. We're going to do it by setting the message headers rather than just doing it here. So let's just cancel that. So we're not going to use that, but that is the way you'd normally do it. If we go over to the Postman website and look at the basic authentication, uh, this is the URL we go for, and this re requires that we authenticate. Now the username is Postman and the password is password. And the header we're going to have to send is authorization basic and the password here. Now this here is rather cryptic. It is actually a base64 encoded string and the string is the username which is postman colon password. So you take the two together and then you base64 encode them and you finish up with this rather cryptic string here. Now fortunately if you can do that in node and there's my base64 node and this is my inject node so what I've done here you spelled it wrong is I've got postman colon password which is what the username and password is and I'm going to inject this into the base64 node and I'm going to look at the message payload and if I just deploy it and inject. Now there is my cryptic string that I need to use. Okay, now I've already done that so I don't need to do it so we can get rid of that. And I'm setting the username and password in the inject node here. And you can see here it's prefix with basic and then there's the cryptic string. And then if I go into the change node I'm setting the message header and this is authorization and I'm setting it to the payload. So done. And then I inject it into the, the request node and the request node is requesting that web page there. And if all goes well I should get a status 200 which means the request has worked. So let's deploy it and make the request and there we can see on the right hand side that it works with status 200 the payload says authentication true so that worked now an alternative for using the change node instead of doing it here in the change node we could have done it into a function node and I've got the function node example down here and you can see it's very similar the message header is set to a blank string then we set this message header authorization equals basic and the 
again the cryptic string the base64 encoded username and, and password and we return the message now I've done this with username and password and you can do this with any of the message headers so you remember you can change them or you can set them in a, in a function node or you can set them in a change node whichever is uh, easiest now before I finish this flow I I just want to wire this into the debug node so we can actually see what happens with this change node and then we'll deploy it and then we'll inject and you can see here this is the top message I'm looking at the payload is the basic whatever it is and then it's the header and the header object and this is the username and password encoded here now the actual payload itself we could have set to blank because we don't need it it was only used to set the header property in the in this change node now this is all past this object this message object which has got a a payload object and a header object is all passed into the request node and the request node doesn't need the payload anymore uh, we're not using it but it does extract the header object from there and it uses what we've actually put in there which is the authorization header and it uses that as part of the request header so it adds them to the default headers that it's going to send off to the the web server okay just before we finish the video here's a few uh, useful resources and I'll put them in the video description below as well so you can uh, find links there and this is the username which is postman password is password and we combine them together with a colon separate them and then we encode this using base64 encoding and we finish up with a base64 encoded string which is here now it looks like it's encrypted it's not encrypted uh, base64 is not an encryption mechanism it just means that it's just a way of, of encoding data so we can send it over a text link well that brings us to the end of the video in the next video we're going to look at um, posting data using the post method and that will be the uh, final video of the series and if you've got any comments on this video then please leave them below if you like the video then you click on the like button below and if you want to get notified of new videos on the channel then you can always subscribe and if you use social media feel free to share the video on social media until next time goodbye